This morning in our series, Asked and Answered, NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar is addressing some common health questions as we head into spring cold and allergy season. Dr. Natalie, good hey, morning. Good morning, morning guys. Good to see you all. I know I feel it. Sorry, I'm over here sniffling already. All right, so let's go to our first viewer. Rusty Bills is his name. He lives in a beautiful place, Laguna Niguel, California. He has a question on spring allergies. Let's listen. I feel like my allergies are getting worse each year. So much so it could be cold symptoms. How can I tell the difference? That's a really good question because I, last week I would take uh, Zyrtec and then I would take Dayquil. Like I just wasn't sure. You weren't sure what you were dealing with? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, okay, I'm gonna solve the conundrum once and for all, but also I'm gonna say, and this is a news flash. You can have both, right? I mean, I know we're always distinguishing because we don't want to infect other people. We want to know if we're infected with a virus versus allergies. Here are some pearls to take with you guys. Colds and flus, those symptoms are generally going to last about seven to 10 days. Allergies, on the other hand, they are going to linger for weeks and weeks and weeks. Remember, this is super important. If you remember one thing, allergies are associated with itchy eyes, itchy nose, itchy throat, and with a cold or a flu, you're going to have those muscle aches, you're going to have fatigue, and you're going to have a fever. Remember, with flu, it's usually going to be high. So again, you can obviously have both things at the same time. You can try an antihistamine, and if you're like, can wow, you I feel so much better. at the same better, time? Treat for both at the same yeah, time? Yeah, can you? 100%. Okay. 100%. But those are, the, those are the takeaways, and really, it's the itchiness that's going to be allergy, and it lasts for weeks and weeks and weeks on it. All right. Okay, so speaking of allergies, mm -hmm. we have Sam from Manhasset, Long Island. He has a question of what types of meds to take. Every once in a while, I come across headlines on social media warning us about antihistamines, but it's allergy season. How much Benadryl is too much Benadryl? Mm. That's a fair question. question. It is a fair question. So we really recommend, or allergists, I should say, recommend that you can start taking an antihistamine a couple of weeks before allergy season. So think in the Northeast, March, April, you can start taking that antihistamine every single day, starting in, let's say, late February. It is okay to take, da to take daily, and we usually recommend, as opposed to Benadryl, which can cause sedation, mm -hmm. during the day we recommend doing a Claritin or a Zyrtec or an Allegra. Those are non-sedating antihistamines. And then the great thing about antihistamines is that it doesn't just have to be taken by mouth. There are nasal antihistamines that you put in the nose, and there are also ones that you can put in your eyes. You're just basically trying to attack that itchiness and that histamine response everywhere from your chin up. Okay. Craig, you look perplexed. Oh, yeah, because I was just going to ask you in terms of, like, taking allergy medicine before you go to bed at night. Yes. Is, is that a good idea? Well, Benadryl would be the one that you would take in the evening if you were also hoping to get a little bit of like, oh, it's going to give me a good night's sleep. Okay. We don't recommend taking Benadryl on a regular basis for the purpose of sleep. But if you're suffering with allergies and you want to take something at night, if you do take a Benadryl, it's obviously going to also make you a little bit sleepy. Okay. This next mm. question is about springtime colds. Yes. It's from Sayumya in uh, Chicago. I don't want the sniffles to keep me from enjoying the warmer weather. What can I do to ward off an oncoming cold? So, you know, the thing that we do recommend, I mean, I, I always say, like, nature is your cheapest gym. We do <laughs> want people to go outside in the springtime. And I think a lot of people, you know, make the mistake of going outside and then coming back in and you're just bringing all those allergens in with you. So remember, and it also can be on pets, when you come in, wash your hair, wash your clothes, wash your pets. You might want to keep the screens closed mm -hmm. and use air filters. Yeah. This is really important. If you have an HVAC system, you can have a disposable filter that you replace every three months but if you're in a smaller room you can actually get a little HEPA filter to screen out those allergens but you have to make sure that it's scaled for your room there's something called a clean air delivery rate so you don't want to have a tiny one for a big room or an oversized one for a small room but all of those things can help that's mostly for allergies warding off colds it's the old-fashioned stuff yeah. guys mm -hmm. sleep exercise, diet, all of that kind of stuff to help you have a, a robust immune system and, and that is can we Bust this one thing. When we go from winter to spring, people say, oh, well, I'm going from hot to cold and I've got a cold right. now. That does not cold. cold it is cold. not true. The change in temperature doesn't carry with it new viruses that are more, you know, like, you know, more virulent. What actually can happen, though, going from the fall to winter is that colder, drier air means colder, drier nasal passages. And that can actually make bugs more likely to infect you. But it hasn't have to do with the temperature itself. It has to do with those sort of like downstream effects. I can okay. just sit here and ask and get answers all get day. All the answers. Yeah, right? Thank great. you so she has much. She to go see patients. So no yeah. more questions. Right. And you've got uh, now, you always ask me that. Not today. That's true. Thank you, though. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do it again. All right. Thanks, Doc.
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.